Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leet Code called Next Permutation. It is a medium. Let's get started. Implement next permutation, which rearranges numbers into the lexicographically next greater permutation of numbers. If such arrangement is not possible, it must rearrange it as the lowest possible order, i.e. sorted in ascending order. The replacement must be in place and use only constant extra memory. Here are some examples. Inputs are in the left-hand column and the corresponding outputs are in the right-hand column. Given 1, 2, 3, we output the next greater permutation, 1, 3, 2. Given 3, 2, 1, the next greater arrangement isn't possible, so we rearrange it as the lowest possible order, 1, 2, 3. And given 1, 1, 5, the next permutation is 1, 5, 1. So like always, let's just look at a few examples to get a super clear idea of what's happening. So if nums was equal to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, what is our output? Well, what are we trying to return here? Given some arrangement of numbers, we want to rearrange those numbers to form a number just greater than our given input arrangement of numbers. And if that isn't possible, that means that we already have the greatest arrangement possible. We then want to return the lowest number possible. So right off the bat, we can see that 54,321 is the biggest arrangement we can make out of the numbers 54321. And why is that? Well, we have the greatest numbers in the most significant place. So 50,000 something would have been a lot different than had one been there, which would have only resulted in 10,000 something. And we can see that this is an ascending order right to left which makes sense because all the big numbers are pushed as far left to the most significant places as possible. If it was um, 5, 4, 3, 1, 2, well then we could have switched the 2 and the 1 to make that next greater number. And since we now have established that we have the greatest arrangement possible and we can't make the, rest, the next greater number, we now want to return the lowest possible order, which would be just reversing it. So putting the small numbers in the most significant places to result in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what I did is I just switched the 1 with the 5, the 4 with the 2, and 3 just stayed. And let's look at one more example. If we had 1, 2, 7, 9, 6, 4, 1, what is our output going to be? Well, right off the bat, we can see that this isn't the greatest arrangement possible. Um, we start with a 1, but we do have 9 and 7 available to us. So what's our next greater permutation? We don't want just any greater number. If we start from the right and see what we can change from there, that's just greater than what we currently have, that will make the next greater permutation because we want something just above what we have. So if we start from the least significant places, we're incrementing little at a time. So. 1, we won't really be able to switch anything with just one digit. But 4 and 1, we can't really switch anything because 4 is higher than 1 and is also in a more significant place. So rearranging 4 and 1 won't give us a bigger number. Same with 6, 4, 1. And as you can see, we're ascending right to left. So we ascend all the way up until, uh, up until 9. But when we see the 7, we stop ascending, which means that we have a number that we can replace it with. So what's the number that I've already come across that is just greater than 7? Well, that would be 9. So I'm going to switch out 9 and 7. So 1, 2, 9, 7, 6, 4, 1. But I wanted a number just greater than. After I switched the 9 and the 7, 7, 6, 4, 1 formed the greatest numbers possible from those four numbers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse these to make the lowest number possible. So 1, 4, 6, 7. And after doing this, I now have the next greater permutation. Let's look at one more example. If nums was equal to 1, 7, 9, 9, 8, 3. Well, following the same logic, I want to start as far right and see what I can change there. I don't even need to start with the last digit since I know swapping itself won't do anything. So 8, is it ascending compared to the previous one? Yes, move on. 9, 9, we're still greater than equal to, so 
out of these four numbers, if we just had these, we would have had our greatest number possible. But once we get to the 7, we stop ascending. And what I'm going to do here is a little bit different than what I did before, before I first swapped. But here I'm going to actually reverse the ascending numbers first and then swap. And regardless of what order I do it in, I get the same result. So if I do 1, 7, 3, 8, 9, 9, I have rearranged my ascending numbers. Now I just need to find a number greater than 7. So it's not 3, but it is 8. So I'm going to swap 8 and 7. And that is going to form my next greater permutation. And that's all there is to it, really. You first want to iterate and see when you stop ascending. Reverse the ascending elements. And then iterate one more time to find a number just greater than the number you stopped at originally. So I'm just going to go ahead and code this up. And since I do a lot of swapping and reversing, I'm also going to make some helper functions. So def swap nums index 1 index 2 10 equals nums of index 1 nums of index 1 will now take nums of index 2 and nums of index 2 will now hold 10. And I'm also going to make a reverse. So def reverse. So nums beginning end. While beginning is less than end. I'm going to call my helper function that I just made right now. Swap. Oh, swap nums beginning end and beginning plus equals 1, and minus equals 1. So what I'm doing here is I have two iterators, and they're just going to keep swapping in place until they meet in the middle. And for the actual logic now, I'm going to start with some conditionals. So if length of nums equals 1, well then I'm just going to return since I don't really have to swap anything. And if length of nums equals 2, I'm just going to swap whatever I have. So it's either going to be the biggest number possible or the smallest. Either way, I just swap. So return solve dot swap nums 0 and 1. And now I'm going to start with my actual logic. So I'm going to have an index called decrementing, which is going to represent my first uh, non-ascending index. So this is going to start from the second to last index, so length of nums minus 2. Since, remember, we don't really need to look at that last digit, it can't swap with anything. And while this is greater than or equal to 0, and, and we are actually ascending, so and nums of descending is greater than or equal to nums of descending plus 1, we want to keep pushing left. So descent minus equal 1. And now that I have that number, I'm going to reverse everything that was after that. So solve.reverse nums from decrement plus 1 to length of nums minus 1. And if decrement equals negative 1, well, that means I went through the entire input list of nums and went outside, which meant that my entire list was in ascending order, so I had the greatest number possible. In which case, after I reverse, I now have the smallest number possible, so I just want to return. And if that is not the case, I want to iterate one more time to find a number just bigger than what's ever stored at the decrementing index. So I'm going to have a next number, and that's going to be the one that's just greater. It's going to equal decrement plus 1. And while decrement, or while next number is less than length of nums, and nums of next num is less than or equal to nums of decrement. I want to increase next num plus equals 1. And wherever I stop, whenever I stop, 
I just want to swap those two numbers. So solve dot swap next num and decrement. And I have to pass in nums and run code. Let's see, num is not defined. That is because it is nums. Put this all in view. Run code. Accepted. Submit. And it is accepted. Now, talking quickly about runtime and space time. Well, at runtime, we only iterate three times. We first iterate to find our first non-ascending number, then one more time for this reverse function, and then one final time to find a number to swap out with our first non-ascending number. So that is O of n. And for space, we only use constant extra space to keep in terms with what the problem was asking. So we, we have O of n runtime and O of 1 space. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.